What's going on guys? Chris Chavez here with Fandra.com. Uh, you can see I have here in my hand uh, the one, the only, the HTC One. This is HTC's flagship device for 2013 and I actually have the pleasure of bringing you my review. In this review we're going to cover all the ins and outs of the device, uh, going over the hardware, all the new features from the software, and pretty much giving you everything you need to make an informed purchase. We have a lot to cover so without wasting too much time let's just get straight to it. First up I just want to cover some of the basic hardware of the phone. Uh, right off the bat you have a gorgeous 4.7 inch full 1080p a super LCD 3 display. Now this is easily the best display on the market. Uh, HTC really only had to outdo themselves. Uh, last year they had super LCD 2 uh, display on the HTC One X and that was uh, back then that was the best display I had ever seen uh, but it was only clocked or only uh, the resolution was only 720p. This is full 1080p with a blistering, I believe it's like 446 PPI or something along those lines. Uh, also on the front you have a 2.1 megapixel camera front facing. Dual front facing speakers, HTC actually calls this their boom sound speakers. A micro USB port, a little microphone there. The micro USB port actually is an MHL port as well so if you had an MHL adapter you could actually plug that in and plug the phone in and hook it up to your TV. Uh, on the back, there's pretty much nothing here. It's it's pretty plain and simple. You have a wonderful HTC logo there. Their four megapixel, or excuse me, their ultra pixel camera right here along the back. HTC touts this as one of the best cameras uh, on the market simply because it lets in 300% more light. So that means your low light shots, if you're in a restaurant, if you're in somewhere that's dimly lit, it's going to still come out bright and you'll be able to see everybody in the in the photo. Along the top we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and this little guy right here is actually an infrared blaster. This gives the phone a universal remote functionality uh, using one of the included apps in Sense5. You can see the phone is very thin. It's only about 9.0 millimeters thick at its uh, thickest point right there. On the sides, the phone tapers off substantially, making it feel like you know you're holding a, I would say maybe like a five millimeter phone. It feels super thin in the hand because you're not gripping, I mean, the full, I guess, girth of it. Now the phone feels extra solid. This has a little something to do with uh, what HTC calls their zero gap, uh, unibody-like build quality. You can see the phone is made out of a very nice strong aluminum. Uh, there's absolutely no give anywhere on the device. It feels, quite honestly, this is the most solid feeling Android device I have ever held in my hands. Uh, super premium materials. You can see some of the aluminum here is a diamond cut so it gives it this nice little shiny bit of area right there along the sides. There's absolutely no denying that this is one of the sexiest Android devices to date. However, I did find some slight issues with the build quality. Uh, I've actually had a chance to play with quite a few of these devices and on every model, I guess the pre-release models, the ones that actually technically haven't come out yet, although this is a release AT&T version, uh, along this little speaker area right here, it's supposed to be a zero gap, but there's some gap. And it's kind of weird and it kind of bothers me a little bit, but uh, if I turn it a certain way, I'll have pictures on the site that show this or illustrate it a little bit better. Um, and I could even open it up a little bit and stick my fingernail in between. Uh, this is actually made more apparent by the fact that the bottom portion or the back plate is actually completely zero gapped. So just it's true to HTC's word on the side, same as well. But once you get to this little top and bottom areas, there's actually some gap here. Uh, and if I actually press it with my hand, I can make it totally disappear. Oh, zero gap, gap, zero gap. So that was a little bit frustrating. Also, uh, the little plastic holes are the little places where they drilled uh, the holes into the plastic is a little bit rough. There's some little pieces that kind of hang there, like a hanging chad. Uh, same along the little infrared port here, and uh, I would just like to see that a little bit smoother. It just looks a little bit ghetto to me. Another part that also bothered me was the fact that you cannot feel the volume rocker with your fingers. You can actually feel the bottom part just nice and fine. It sticks out just a hair. Uh, the top actually slopes in and it completely embeds into the phone, meaning that you don't even know when you're holding the volume rocker. Sometimes you'll try to press it and you'll miss. Same goes for the infrared button at the top. I think the most difficult part about this phone is the fact that you never know where the infrared button is since you can't, you can't feel it, the power button. I also mentioned this in my review, but the back and home buttons here along the front 
are also extremely difficult to hit. Uh, most of the time you will have to press them uh, quite a few times, same with the little power button, uh, just to get it just right. The target is very, very small, and I feel like I'm always fiddling around with this phone. I've had it for a week and I've been using it, but I'm always, you know, missing the power button or missing the home or back button, and it just becomes really, really frustrating and just, uh, I guess, small and nitpicky, but something that I notice. Now, there are only two capacitive buttons here along the front. You have the back and the home. Back does exactly what you expect it to do. Pressing home once will take you to your default home screen. Uh, long pressing it will open Google Now. And double tapping will open up your multitasking. The HTC little logo doesn't do absolutely anything. Uh, and that's not the part that bothers me. The part that bothers me is the fact that the, you cannot remap these functions anywhere in the settings on previous uh, the HTC One X and HTC One S. There's actually an update that allowed you to remap these buttons to make them whatever you want. So you could actually long press the back button and it would pull up the menu. Uh, something that was super useful and it kind of sucks that this doesn't have it and that HTC kind of left it out. Inside the device you'll find a nicely clocked 1.7 gigahertz uh, Snapdragon 600 quad core processor and two gigabytes of RAM. These together absolutely make the phone fly. There's pretty much nothing you can do on here to slow it down. Everything is super quick. Uh, jumping between apps is like almost near instant. It's it's just it's a it's a joy to use. Honestly, this is probably the fastest Android device I have ever used, and I've used them all. I've had the Note 2. I currently have the Nexus 4, uh, HTC Droid DNA, and without a doubt, this is the fastest Android device. Even though it's not running stock Android, it is still faster than the Nexus 4 in just everyday use. Benchmarks are absolutely out of the control, so if you guys want to see some of those, make sure you hit up the link in the description area to be taken to our actual review, where we'll have all the benchmark scores, and let me just go ahead and spoil it for you and say that they uh, destroy many of the devices out there. The HTC One comes in two storage capacities. This is the 32 gigabyte version. Uh, there is also a 64 gigabyte version. Uh, just keep in mind that after formatting and uh, loading of the OS onto the, the internal memory, that pretty much equals out to 25 and 57 gigabytes respectively. Of course, there'll be those to point out that this does not have expandable memory, so there is no way to put in a micro SD slot anywhere on the device. And where at one point that used to bother me with Android devices, I kind of feel like the argument is getting a little bit tired now, especially with devices like this. 32 gigabytes is more than almost anybody is going to need uh, for their storage needs, I guess your average person. And then 64 gigabytes is absolutely insane. Uh, I think the biggest little micro SD card I have is 32 anyway, so 64 is awesome. Not to mention, with so many cloud services that we have nowadays, there's Copy, there's Dropbox, there's Google Drive. Uh, for music, you pretty much stream stuff on Pandora or you can stream it from your Google Play Music. Uh, it just seems like expandable memory is no longer a necessity. Uh, it would be a nice option to have, I agree, but I'm not going to completely dismiss the device if it doesn't have it. Now, without taking up too much time, I want to show you guys one of the biggest touted features, and that is the camera. HTC has revamped their camera software. They have tons of settings and options. You can go to uh, different scenes, night mode, HDR. Uh, HDR, they were kind of bragging about in their announcement, but... Uh, in my use, it just makes the images and video look absolutely horrible, so I don't recommend using that. Pictures are taken near instantaneously. Just click it, and then boom, it saves it up there. Uh, image quality is amazing. In daylight, you still get some, I mean, pretty much any smartphone camera will look awesome. And uh, if you do look at the pictures, you know, they look like a smartphone camera. There's really no denying that. Some people are expecting, I guess, point-and-shoot quality. Uh, not quite there yet, but it's in low light where the HTC One truly shines. Uh, they say 300% more uh, light captured in its ultra megapixel or ultra pixel sensor. And in my test, I've actually found that to be pretty much true. If you guys jump onto the uh, link in the bottom description area on my post on Fandroid, I've actually included some sample shots uh, comparing the camera with the Galaxy Note 2 and even the HTC Droid DNA. And in low light, there's just absolutely no best in this camera. So if you're at a club, if you're in a restaurant, if you're just about anywhere where it's dimly lit, this is going to uh, far exceed what you would expect from a smartphone. Now video quality on this is stunning. Uh, not just the video quality, but the audio quality as well. Uh, I can literally probably start using this to blog. So whenever I go to events now, I might just actually just use this to record uh, some new phone that's out or something because it is that good. The quality is 
so amazing. A low light, everything. It's a 1080p uh, resolution. It's just, it's, I think this is probably the best video I think I've ever seen from a smartphone, hands down. Now, another neat little uh, HTC feature or Sense 5 feature is this little uh, guy here. This is called a Zoe. And you press this, and it's a little bit complicated at first. People don't really know what to think of it or how it works or what it really is. But what it does is you press the camera button here, and like you would to normally take a picture. And in the background, it's taking 20 pictures. You can see the little red thing filling up. The camera fills up red. Once it's done, you have a quick little video. Go ahead and play it for you. Uh, and this video isn't just video. It's not just a three-second video clip, but there's actually 20 full 4 megapixel resolution photos being taken in the background as well. And even before you even tap the little Zoe capture button, you can see if I clicked it here, uh, there's a second of video that was taken beforehand, uh, a few photos and stuff. So, uh, needless to say, this will eat up some battery life. So I would say use them sparingly, but they're pretty cool when you want to go back to a specific moment in time. Uh, it gives you a nice little video there and then dragging it here will show you all of the, the pictures that it was taken in the background while the video was recording. Now if you're wondering how useful a three second video clip would be, um, I'm going to have to show you a little bit later when we get to the phone, our Sense, all new Sense 5 gallery. But I guess there's no better time to uh, talk about that than right now. So opening the Sense gallery is a little bit strange. There's <laughs> You, nobody really knows what is going on here. So you have your friends clicking this will actually open up all your Facebook friends and you can browse through their galleries of photos. Here is the most recent picture from your timeline, I believe. Uh, clicking on my photos up here will take you to all your albums, which is a traditional Android gallery view. Camera shots is down here. This is basically opening your last uh, taken picture. And then of course you can still swipe over to see the rest of your pictures, but there's no uh, grid view there until you uh, jump into your album. So my photos here. First off, it actually puts it as an event and events are taken by the day. So you can see here every single day that I've had the phone, there will be a group of photos. If I jump to albums, this is just a traditional sense, you know, your album. So according to folders on your SD card. So this is pretty much just your standard stuff. You can see the little Zoe's are actually playing uh, while you're watching them or while you're looking at our view in your gallery. And this is pretty much standard sense stuff here. Events are where things get really fun because when you're in the event mode, you can actually make short little video clips of whatever your uh, whatever happened that day. So if I click here, uh, you can see here I have a couple of Zoe's that I took. I actually took a handful of Zoe's here uh, and some pictures of other stuff that I was doing during the day, some camera tests, uh, even some video, and those are marked with a play button. Uh, one thing that kind of bothers me is Zoe's aren't distinguished from uh, your normal photo. So this is actually a normal photo. This is a Zoe but there's really no way to know that unless it just starts playing on its own and you're like, oh, okay, that's a Zoe. Kind of frustrating and it, they really need to mark those as Zoe's. Now that's not all events do. So if I click this little top tile here at the top, this is gonna be the top of every single event. If I click it, it's going to make a cool little montage video using all these wacky, crazy filters. It's gonna put them all together for me and it plays music. And that's just my boy. And it really, really is awesome. Uh, depending on what you choose to put in there, I find Zoe's work best with short little video clips and it makes it into some awesome little thing there. I love this. I can't tell you how much I love it. Uh, clicking on the side here, you can save it to your SD card. You can share it, uploading it to HTC servers and sending someone a link where they can watch it on their web browser. You can select specific content if you don't want every single picture from that day to appear in this little quick video and then you can change the music as well to suit the mood. Now the problem I have with these HTC Zoe Share things is that uh, even when you select the content you want to include in the video, like say I just want to show you know my dog here and I don't want to include the little pictures of Link, uh, sometimes it'll include pictures that you didn't select and videos and stuff that you didn't select and it's super frustrating so something HTC needs to work on in a future update for sure. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the front-facing speakers. Uh, they're not just stereo speakers. Uh, HTC calls it boom sound, and uh, they are super good quality. I was so surprised to uh, hear, I guess, the quality of sound that was coming out of these things, and it really is almost uh, startling the first time you hear a notification coming at you in your ears as opposed to being shot out from the back. I think this is an incredibly awesome, innovative feature, and I am so glad that HTC brought it. But 
It's not just for music, which it does well. Let me go ahead and play a song for you guys here. You can see it's super loud, or loud enough, really. I wouldn't say super loud. I have heard louder speakers from other smartphones, but I guess it's the fact that you now have two of them facing you and hitting your ears. It makes it appear as if the sound is louder than it really is. Of course, Beats does kick in, and I kind of want to show you guys that. Normally, I know, everyone hates Beats. They say it's stupid and it uh, makes the sound all loud, like bassy, and it's just uh, horrible, but for the front-facing speakers, it really does increase the audio and makes a more fuller sound. Without it, it sounds like your typical smartphone. It's kind of tinny, sounds like a little squawk box. I hate it. Clicking it, then you can start hearing some bass. You can hear the mids, a couple of lows in there. It's a much, much more fuller sound, so the Beats works awesome with the front facing speakers. I have absolutely no complaints there at all. The other cool part is when you play video games, I can't tell you how much more immersive it is to have stereo front facing speakers when you're playing a video game on your phone. I was playing Dungeon Hunter 4 the other day and I just couldn't, almost couldn't believe it, just <laughs> how much better. It's like, what have I been doing with my life when I'm playing with a uh, video games with a back facing speaker, it's just silly. Another awesome benefit of having stereo front facing speakers is in navigation. Uh, when I put my phone in the car dock, I no longer have to tell everyone to shut up, turn down my music, uh, because I can't hear the navigation lady talking now. Uh, she talks at me. It's going into my ears. I could hear it clearly and loudly. It's just it's it really is life-changing I can't say enough about the little boom sound stereo front-facing speakers And I also can't believe I keep saying boom sound now battery life with HTC one is pretty good I know a lot of people HTC has a bad rap for having some of the worst battery life from their devices in the past but I guess it's time to finally bury bury the hatchet, you leave the past behind you because HTC definitely has, uh, with the new processor, uh, in standby mode, you can go really, really long. The Snapdragon 600 uh, is really good at standby. In use, the Snapdragon processor can definitely, uh, it goes hard in the paint, so to speak. Now, on average, I get about nine, anywhere between nine and 16 hours of battery life. It's uh, fairly inconsistent only in that, I mean, some days I have worse reception than others. Sometimes I'm taking video, sometimes I'm playing games. So it really depends on what you're doing. Again, when the Snapdragon is kicking in and firing all four cylinders, it's going to definitely impact the battery life. HTC does include some nice little software to help along with that. It's called the Power Saver. Enabling it will actually clock or slow down that CPU from eating up so much battery, uh, lower your display, uh, brightness, turn off vibration, and it'll kill your data connection when your phone is in sleep mode. So if you have Power Saver enabled and you go into sleep mode like that, it's going to kill your data connection when you turn it on, data will come on, and you'll get all your notifications and stuff. Of course, when data's off, you don't have to worry. Uh, you'll still get phone calls and text messages if you uh, really, really need those. So it's cool if you're in a tight situation where you really need all the battery life you can get, like if you're at Disneyland or amusement park or something. All right, so let's cover some of this new stuff with Sense 5. Uh, Sense 5 is all new. It's completely optimized. Uh, if you've hated Sense in the past, it is a lot more minimal. They have finally changed the icons. Everything's been updated, and honestly, I really, really like it uh, in speed. It is just, there's absolutely no lag whatsoever. So HTC definitely went back to the drawing board and has completely overhauled Sense for this all new version of Sense 5. So I don't really want to hear the argument that, oh, I hated Sense, I, I had the HTC Hero and Sense sucked. Well, that was a long time ago, bro. So this here is your lock screen. You just drag up here to unlock. Uh, you can do the same with these icons to launch those applications. You can pull up from here to unlock. You can pull up from a calendar reminder to unlock. There are some options for lock screen. You can personalize those. So you have different lock screens that you can choose to show different widgets. You could have just the weather widget, productivity with your messages and emails, a photo gallery, music widget and then absolutely no lock screen at all. Now HTC has completely redone their home screen. So this is their launcher here. Uh, there's no more crazy 3D effect. It's moving in a glorious 60 buttery smooth frames per second. Now swiping all the way over to the left here is HTC's Blink Feed. I don't want to dive into it too much. I believe it's a really cool little fun little uh, RSS feeder or news app. You can customize it to show your feed from Facebook and Twitter and uh, specific news sites and technology sites. You can't actually choose your own, which I don't like, but other than that, I think it's awesome. It's beautiful, it's well like well put together. Uh, you can click on it and it just brings up a little uh, mobile view and then you can share that with your friends. It's, it's neat, it's neat. 
There's no way to actually get rid of it from your home screen. It's always going to be to the left, uh, although it won't suck a battery unless you want it to. You can actually, there's some uh, settings here that allow you to customize it and you can have it so it only refreshes once you open it or once you pull down to refresh. So you don't have to worry about it constantly updating the background, eating up your battery. Pinching on the home screen here will bring up your uh, home screens here at the top. You're only given five home screens minus your blink feed one. So that's about four home screens to kind of play around with. Okay, so probably the most difficult part about Sense and the Sense launcher is this uh, application drawer. So you get, you're presented with your weather here at the top. You can sort your application drawer by uh, custom. So you can drag and drop them wherever you want, make little folders. You can keep them in alphabetical, which is just a standard Android way, which, which I'm doing here. And then you could also sort them by your most recent. There are different, you can hide specific apps. You can uh, grid size, you can change the grid size to three by four, although I don't know why anyone would want that. I always go by four by five. And you think that's pretty much it, right? It just seems pretty standard. Wrong. Uh, trying to drop an icon onto your home screen, normally you'd long press it and it would take you to your home screen. Now you got to bring it all the way up here to the shortcut and then try to drop it somewhere on your home screen. It's an extra step and it's very frustrating and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And that's not even the worst part. Let's talk about your little dock down here. So you would think this is just your standard dock, right? You can drag and... Nope, it disappears. So you can't drag an icon onto it. Uh, maybe you could just drag an icon off of it, right? Kind of. It's going to make a duplicate. Essentially, this is just an extension of the app drawer. There's absolutely no difference between the app drawer and your dock. They're treated as one and the same. If you drag something out of your dock, it'll go into your app drawer. Dragging something from your app drawer into your dock will remove it from your app drawer. So basically, this is a, a small little app drawer down here along the bottom. So that's why it makes duplicates. Just like when I dragged the Androidify icon down there. I mean, it's still in your app drawer, of course. Horrible implementation. I don't like it. It's super confusing. And I don't know how the everyday soccer mom or Joe Schmo is going to be able to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> in previous HTC devices like the One X and One S, there was actually a lawsuit from Apple that prevented HTC from being able to click a link and being prompted. It's called an Android intent and then showing av available options from different applications you can use to open that link. Uh, for instance, YouTube, on previous HTC devices, you would actually go into settings and you would have to say, open this app all the time when you click a YouTube link. So it could be your browser, it could be the actual YouTube app. Uh, now it's back because I guess HTC has uh, licensed some stuff with Apple. So it's no longer an issue. You can see here, if you click a YouTube video, you can choose what you want to open it up with. So that's an awesome option and I'm glad it's back and screw Apple. Now to take advantage of the infrared blaster, HTC has created this TV app with the help of the guys at Peel. Uh, it gives you, you know, just your standard stuff here. Uh, clicking on your remote will give you remote functions. You can jump over here to go to the numbers. You can actually uh, set up different, uh, your home stereo, your TV, uh, that sort of stuff, two specific rooms. I actually have one for the game room and then I'm going to set another one up for my living room, which is really, really cool and nice. Uh, and it works flawlessly. Like setup was the most, one of the most easiest things I've ever used in my life. Here you can see uh, some shows that they want you to watch and you actually, when you first open it, set up your cable provider so you can see what's going on. And once you've opened the application, it'll stay open in the notification area down here so you can quickly jump to your remote or the application when you need to. So all in all, the HTC One is arguably the best Android smartphone to date. Uh, of course, everyone has their preferences. Some people like a little bigger screen. Some people like a plastic build quality, but uh, it's a combination of an awesome camera, awesome display, awesome hardware with the front facing speakers. I mean, HTC absolutely hit it out of the ballpark with the HTC One. The phone gets great battery life. It's light in the hand. It feels awesome. It looks great. And I honestly just can't say enough about the device. It's not perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect smartphone. Just because you spent a lot of money on your phone doesn't make it perfect. Every phone has its downsides. I've kind of explored some of those here with the HTC One. But overall, I'd say this is quite literally the best Android smartphone I have ever owned in my life. I definitely commend HTC for what they've done here with this phone. It's a gorgeous device and it is definitely going to be my next smartphone for, for a very long time. 
And that just wraps up my review for the HTC One on AT&T. Don't forget to hit up the description area down below to be taken to the full review where I have tons of screenshots and I dive into even more depth on everything I talked about here in this video. I hope this video was informative to you and will help you make an informed purchase with Fandro.com. I am Chris Chavez. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.